Dr. Neil Munro lived for many years among these people, the Ainu of Japan. And in about 1931, he made this film of a religious ceremony which is now no longer performed, a ceremony which was the most important of all Ainu rituals, the bear ceremony. The Ainu are strikingly different from the Mongoloid peoples who surround them, both racially and culturally. Probably they represent an Aboriginal people who were once much more widely spread but who now only occupy parts of northern Japan. Over the centuries, Ainu custom has been much influenced by their agricultural neighbours, the Japanese. But their religion remains distinctive and relates in many ways to their traditional way of life in which their food was obtained mainly from hunting and fishing. Animal remains are shown great reverence. The skulls of sacrificial animals are offered gifts and prayers to please the animal spirits so that they'll return to be hunted again. But the greatest reverence of all was given to the bear. Captured as a cub, it was kept for several years in a wooden cage before being ritually killed. In preparation for this ceremony, the women pound millet into flour to make dumplings, large ones for the god and spirit relations and smaller ones for the mortal guests. In addition to the dumplings, the women also cooked small round millet cakes to be thrown like confetti and these they thread onto skewers. The day before the main ceremony, friends arrive with gifts of food at the house of the festival host. In the east wall of the house, there's a sacred window, and just beyond it, fences support the offerings, which are the means of communication between the Ainu and their gods. First, they give offerings to the goddess of the hearth, and ask for her protection and approval. Then they offer other household deities and gods outside the house. They offer libations and then finish the drink themselves. They're wearing ceremonial dress with headbands of sacred curled shavings. Evergreens are garlanded round the post to which the bear is to be tied. They signify immortal life. To please the spirits, curled shavings are prepared as offerings. These shavings have great sanctity. When they're still attached to the parent stick, they're called Inau. Each of the many Ainu gods has special stages and forms of Inau appropriate to him. The elders set up the offerings and ask all benevolent gods to come and bless this festival with their presence. Inside the house, food and drink are set out on vessels of Japanese lacquer. The mats around the walls are of sacred design. On the mats hang ceremonial swords. Women prepare skewers on which the smaller millet cakes will be threaded. Children then carry the cakes to the place of the great offering, the place where the head of the bear will be raised.
Preparations for the feast are almost complete. Soup is boiling, dishes have been prepared, and the millet beer brewed. Now the host is ready to receive the first guests. Outside, sightseers from many miles around have gathered to watch the ritual killing of the bear. The cage has housed the bear since it was caught as a cub. Offerings of Inau are placed here too. During its captivity, the bear has been treated with kindness and with the reverence due to a god. It's half tame but the dog still mistrusts it. An Ainu offers prayers and a libation to the bear divinity. Suddenly, the god snatches the libation stick. And now the god must be brought out. Noosed from above and secured by strong cords, the bear is taken from its cage through a hole in the floor. Roaring, but more astonished than ferocious, the bear's guided towards the scene of its death. The god must be amused and made happy, running about outside. The branches of fir tree brush away evil influence. crowd join in the rhythmic singing of traditional songs.
After the bear has been paraded for some time, a few of the men shoot specially decorated arrows at it. But these are without points and do it no harm. Eventually, the bear is tied to the center post. To safeguard him from evil, the executioner is selected late in the proceedings. He prays for the quick and early dispatch by the real arrow, which he will fire. A shot or two by a bamboo-pointed arrow is considered the proper way to free the spirit from the body. The sacred blood mustn't touch the soil, but pure snow doesn't contaminate it. An elder prays for the welfare of the departing spirit. A flight of magic arrows over the place of the great offering signifies the passing of the spirit. Although it's dead, the bear is now ceremonially strangled between two poles. This ritual strangling involves buffoonery and burlesque and relieves the tension which has built up during the slaying of the bear and the release of its spirit. Being a she-bear, the body is decked with a necklace. The spirit is gratified with salutations, compliments, assurances and libations. Strict rules govern the skinning and dividing of the body. Some of the young men reenact the pleasure the god must have experienced in the last moments before the release of its spirit. As a symbol of continuing life, the bear's blood is placed on top of the central post to which it was tied. The Ainu reverently drink the rest of the blood, calling it divine medicine. Cushioned on the skin, the head of the bear is still believed to attract the lingering spirit. Gestures of gratitude are made and praise and libations offered, while the sacred fire burns at the place to which it's hoped will come the holder of space, the world spirit of the Ainu, the source of all life on earth.
here are placed the cups that held the blood. During the feast, etiquette forbids the person who receives the newly filled cup to drink from it. He makes the gesture of reverence and passes it on to the person opposite. An offering is also made to the ancestors. This ceremony of offering to the dead is the only religious rite in which women take part. And now it's time for everyone to enjoy themselves. The small millet cakes are thrown and everyone scrambles to get them because they bring luck through their intimate association with the bear god. For the school children, there's a tug of war. At the place of the great offering, the women dance. For the spirits and the gods are now present as auspicious guests, and everything must be done to please and entertain them. Two chiefs watch the dancing. The ceremonial swords are carried to guard against evil spirits. The final feast is held in the large house. Near the sacred east window lies the head of the bear. 
its lingering cell is the chief guest at the feast. Food is set in front of the god so that it will acquire virtue which will be passed on to those who later eat it. Now the sacred flesh is distributed. The wine master has a place of honour beside the god's head. As an important official, he gets a large portion. Ordinary guests are given small pieces, which they receive devoutly in both hands, doing reverence constantly. The feast includes millet beer, and soon the elders and guests begin to feel its effect, and the men begin to dance. Then the women join in. Among them is the wife of the host, a usually rather sedate lady of 68, dancing like a young girl. Dancing, singing, and the recital of legends go on till morning. But with the dawn comes the time when the god must leave those who have fed and cared for her for so long. The head is taken out through the sacred window and brought once more to the place of the great offering where the sacred fire is still burning. Offerings and prayers are made to the holder of space. 
and then to the spirit of the bear. Thanks and libations are also given to the gods of the woods. The head, with sacred shavings in place of the brain, eyes, ears and tongue, is fixed to a forked pole. It is at this last stage that the bear is asked to return. The Ainu promise to treat it with due reverence and kindness, and that when the time comes for it to depart once again through death, there will be another great joyful festival. The offerings will be generous in return for the sacrifice of its sacred flesh and blood. Then there's a dance to please the parting spirit. Final words of praise and cheer reinforce the faith that the bear will indeed one day come back to this, the country of the Ainu.